Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at aiming and shooting in 2D. Now I've got a simple top-down setup here, but this will work equally well for a side-scrolling shooter if you want to aim the arm of your character around, for example. But we're, what we're going to do here is make it so that our little dude here will be able to move around and aim at wherever the mouse is on screen, so then we can click and shoot uh, our various enemies around the area here. So. To do that, let's get going. We're going to go ahead and I'll go to this player here. So I have him set up uh, with this sprite facing off to the right because by default things will kind of work assuming that we're going off to the right. So I'm going to go into my scripts folder I have here and I'm going to create a new C-Sharp script that we'll call player controller. Now if you want to use the same assets that we have set up here to just as to test things out yourself, uh, there'll be a link in the description down below to download this project file for you to use. So I'm going to open this up here and we're going to add some variables for us to use. I'm actually just going to go back into our player here as well. I'm going to add a rigid body to the player so that we can use some physics to move him around. I'll get, make sure he has no gravity as well. So then back on our script, we're going to create a reference to that rigid body. So we're able to control the velocity of the player. So we'll say public rigid body. 2D that we'll call the RB for the rigid body. Then we need to tell, be able to tell him how fast we want him to move. So we'll say public float move speed. And for now, that's it. We'll get him moving first and then we'll start worrying about uh, making him rotate around and face different ways. So let's make him move. So we'll say the rigid body dot velocity. Very simple movement script we'll have here is equal to new vector2 input that get axis raw so we want to move on the horizontal axis so we're going to take the horizontal input like so so that will be our x velocity so then our y velocity will be the input we put in on the vertical axis so input that get axis raw vertical like so and then we're going to get that whole vector 2 and multiply it by our move speed so this is the most simple and easy way to get some uh, 2D movement going in our game. So let's just jump back in over here. I'm going to set the move speed on my... Well, I need to put the script on him first, but we're going to set the move speed to 8. We'll drop the rigid body into that slot. Then I can press play. And we can move around. So we got our player moving. Perfect. That's good. Let's make him start facing where the mouse is. So to do that, we obviously need to know where the mouse is in the world. So for that, what we can do is below where we move our character, we're going to create a new vector tree that we'll call mouse. And we're going to set that to be equal to input dot mouse position. So that'll give us the mouse position on the screen. So just to demonstrate that in action, let's just do a quick debug dot log of input dot mouse position. And if I just save and Go back in here. If you play and just keep an eye down at the very bottom left, you can see the mouse's position within the world. So perfect. It's it's relative to the dimensions of the screen. So I have it set to 1920 by 1080. So you can see in the top left corner here, it's basically zero on the x-axis and 1080 on the y. And then over here, it's 1920 and zero on the y. So that's how we we get our measurement there. So now that we know the position of the mouse. To be able to get the angle that we want to know between where the player should be looking when they want to look at the the um, the mouse cursor, we need to know where is the player on the screen. So obviously we can see, hey, the player is in this position here, or he might be over here, or wherever he is. But we need to be able to find that out in our script. And how we can do that is we'll create another vector tree, and we'll call this the we'll call it the screen point. So this is where where we are on the screen. How we do this is we need to use a function on the camera because obviously the camera is what's looking at the player and displaying things on the screen. So we use a function called, we go to camera dot main, which gets us, gets us the main camera in our scene. And we'll say world to screen point. So that'll convert a character, I'm sorry, a game object with a transform position It'll convert that in from the world where it's set at the moment to a position on the screen. So that'll give us the same kind of data that we're getting for the input.mouse position. 
So what object do we want to convert with that? Well, we want to use the transform dot local position. So that'll give us the position of the object in the world. And then that'll allow us to say, hey, where is the where is that in relation to the input of the mouse position? Sorry, the input dot mouse position. Now, one thing to be aware of is that camera dot main is not something you should really do in your update loop. So camera.main basically gets us the main camera in our scene, but getting the main camera in our scene is a very expensive task. Because basically what it does is it does a search out of all the game objects that exist in your scene at the moment, and it'll say, hey, get the one that has, if we go back in here, go to main camera, it has the tag main camera on it. So basically it just does a search for any objects with the tag. And if you have a lot of objects in your scene, that gets more and more expensive over time. So instead what we'll do is, just up here, I'm gonna add a private camera that I'll call the cam. And this is something that you should always do for if you have, if you're trying to access camera.main a lot, you should basically create a variable to handle it. And then in the start function, we're gonna say the cam equals camera.main. So basically all that happens is, as soon as we start, it'll do that search once and it'll assign it to the camera and that's it. So we don't have to worry about it happening over and over again. Okay, so now we've got the position of our mouse and the position of our player. And we need to do a little bit of maths. Um, it's a very simple little formula that does it. What we first need is to know the difference between the position of our mouse and the position of our player. So we're gonna create a vector two this time because we only we only need to worry about the x and y position of our player because we're not dealing with the z axis at all so then we're going to say we call this offset and this will be a new vector two and on the x axis it'll be the mouse position so mouse dot x minus the screen point position so the point on the screen that we're comparing to so it'll be mouse dot x minus screen point dot x and then the same on the y-axis, it'll be mouse.y minus screen point dot y. So now we know the difference between our two positions. So it, it, we know where they are in relation to each other in the world. So we have, if our mouse is up here and our player is here, so let's say our player is at zero, zero on the imagine, uh, let's just, actually, we'll go back here. Where our player here is at zero, zero. If our mouse is up here, and let's say that this is over five and up four, then we know the difference between these two is on the x-axis now will be five, and on the y-axis will be four. So then in here, that is what the value we're getting out of this little section here. So with that in mind, what we can then say is, oh, we need to know the angle that we want to set our player to to face that object. And to do that, we just use float angle and we use a form, uh, our function built into Unity. So we'll use a matf.atan2. So if I hover over it, it turns the angle in radians whose tan is y divided by x. So this is just be, an, uh, it's a simple little math formula basically to get the angle between two different objects. And so here we just feed it in the offset dot y and the offset dot x and as, as you can see if we hover over a tan 2 well it still says it here it returns the angle in radians and we don't want it in radians we want it as a float number so we're going to say just after that bracket we'll say multiply that by mathf dot rad to deg so i'll just convert it from radians into degrees so that'll give us a number that we can use and then we can just say transform dot rotation equals quaternion dot Euler. So this is how we set a rotation. We're just setting it using the x, y, and z values because x and y will both be zero. The number we want to change, if we go to our player here, is on the z axis. We want to get this rotation. And as you can see, spin the player around like that. So let's go back here. And then we're going to say here, we want to apply the angle that we've just calculated with our matf eight and two function. So we'll hit our semicolon, we'll save this, and let's jump back into Unity. And we should see that when we play, 
our player now will face wherever the arrow is and as I can move wherever I want wherever I move on the screen the player will always face exactly where I want them to face and that's basically it that's how we can set up the ability to face towards a mouse which obviously allows us to shoot our bullets in a given direction so let's go ahead now and set it up so that we can fire a very simple bullet so for that so for that I'm just going to stop this running here and then I'm going to go into my assets folder I have here and in here under weapons and under shoot here there's a few different bullets and things let's go with this kind of red one we're going to call this bullet it's going to have a very simple very simple little script attached to it we're just going to make it basically move forward based on whatever direction it's facing so at the moment it's going to be facing right so we'll make it move this way and we can do that by obviously creating a script so we're going to create a c sharp script that we'll call bullet controller and then we'll attach it to the bullet open it up and the bullet controller is going to have a very simple bit of maths we're going to give it a not even a bit of maths it's a very simple bit of functionality we'll give it a speed uh, we'll set that to be 10 by default we're also going to give it a rigid body just to make it easy to interact with the world and stuff uh, like so and then in our update we're just going to say the rb dot velocity equals transform dot right and then we're going to multiply that by the speed so basically we're saying hey move to the right and multiply it by speed but when we use transform that right that will actually change depending on which direction the bullet is facing so if the bullet is pointed upwards it will actually make it move upwards so let's just see that in action if i save this go back in here uh, let's give it a rigid body like so we'll turn the gravity off because we don't want it uh, just magically falling out falling down towards the bottom of the screen but now if I press play see the bullet goes off to the right that's fine and dandy but if I rotate it like so let's point at this enemy here if I press play you see the bullet will go in whatever direction it's facing so I can make it face off this way, go over, fly over and shoot that guy. So that's all fine and dandy, but obviously we want our bullet to do something. So I'm just going to make it very simply uh, destroy these robots when it hits them. So my robots, I have them already set up with the enemy tag. So I can go back to my bullet controller and I can use on trigger enter 2D. Collider 2D other. We're going to say if the other dot tag equals enemy then we'll destroy that other object so we'll say destroy other dot game object and destroy ourself so we'll just destroy the game object that the script is attached to we're doing this outside the other dot tag enemy because we also I have some invisible walls set up so it reaches if it reaches the end of the screen it should destroy itself as well so if I just press play let's make sure this is destroy when it hits the edge well no it doesn't because it doesn't have a collider <laughs> attached to it so that's not going to work very well so let's give it a box collider make it a trigger I'm not too worried about the size of it if I press play there we go it hits the edge wall if I rotate it now and hit one of these enemies let's go for this guy who's nice and close he goes over here and boom destroys them okay so perfect our bullets are working let's make it a prefab so i've got a prefab folder here i'm going to drag that in there and then i'll delete it from our scene then back on our player we're going to make him fire this bullet so we'll obviously need we'll need two things we need a point that he's going to fire from so public transform fire point and we'll also need the object we want him to fire so public game object bullet to fire like so and then down here below where we handle our rotation we're just going to say if input dot get mouse button down zero so if you press the left click on the mouse we're going to instantiate a copy of the bullet to fire where do we want it to fire from wherever our fire point dot position is 
and then we're going to use our transform dot rotation because that's the rotation we're applying to our character we want to apply the same thing to our bullets so wherever our transform dot rotation is or whatever our transform dot rotation is that'll be where we fire our bullets so save this jump back in to unity let it compile We'll have a few more extra options here. Okay, so I on my player here, I've already got a point set up just in front of the barrel of the gun here. So I'm gonna click and drag this into the fire point. Then what we want to fire, we're gonna to go to our prefabs, to the bullet we just made, pop that in there. And now when I press play, I can shoot my bullet in lots of different directions. I can shoot my four different enemies here. And that's it, so now I can shoot whatever I want I'm able to shoot in all kinds of directions it's very very easy to set up this 2d kind of shooting style but it's also a lot of fun and it makes for a lot of fun gameplay that you can do in your games too so there you go thanks for watching this episode if you want to learn more about top-down shooting you can get my roguelike course with a link in the description down below where you will learn mechanics like this and also a lot more stuff more in-depth uh, shooting different guns picking up different gun types and stuff like that and for the month of December with the link in the description you'll be able to get the course for 90% off so go check it out have fun and I'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness